It's a good time this morning to be friendly and invite someone else to sit at your table with you. We have a wonderful morning planned. We have some wonderful food. And obviously, as you look around, some good people to share it with. But we thank you for being with us. My name is Jim Jessup. I am the Director of Church Relations for the University. And it is my, uh, just my honor to be able to welcome you here this morning. Many of you have been on campus uh, many times probably. For some of you, it might be your first time. This is where we have chapel. This is where we gather for performances, music, and theater. And we just had graduation on Saturday, just about five days ago, and it was wonderful. Um, we have come together today, though, to pray. And um, when I was little, my mother used to look at me and say, Jimmy, you better pray. That'll come out of the carpet. <laughs> and that's when I learned to pray. Now, I don't know where you learn to pray, when you learn to pray, but I believe that this morning God will listen. And we believe in his power to answer. And I hope that as you are sitting with friends or family or maybe people you're just meeting for the first time, that we can enter into a time of unity and prayer this morning. Um, in Matthew 6, Jesus says to go into your closet. Go and pray in secret. Just pray to the Father quietly, not to be seen. Yet we're gathering here together today like they did in Acts chapter 2 when they met to, for teaching and for breaking of bread. We're going to do that here in a little bit together, having breakfast to break the fast. We're, they met for fellowship, but they met for prayer. And it's really neat to be able to gather together because it brings unity in our walk with the Lord. It brings unity with our brothers and sisters to pray together. So I hope that you'll take what you do at home, in private, in the closet with the Lord to bring into this place and not to be a spectator this morning, but to be a participant. Amen? Yeah, as we celebrate together, the opportunity for us to pray together and the opportunity for us to be in unity around our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A couple of housekeeping things here. I want to thank our sponsors, uh, 103.9 The Fish, Christian Music, and 710 AM The Word, Christian Teaching, as we gather to pray. We do appreciate them. And of course, uh, because all of our students are, you know, they're pretty much gone, we, we held on to a few of them. I think we coerced them to stick around to help us put all of this on. But we'd like to give a special thank you and shout out to Bon Appetit. That's our food provider here. Uh, they do a fantastic job in our cafeteria, our cafe, and of course, they're providing breakfast this morning. Jessup University events and the marketing team, as well as the advancement team. Each of these teams have gone above and beyond to host this opportunity together this morning. Martin Luther said, I have so much to do that I shall have to spend the first three hours in prayer. We won't keep you for three hours, but let's begin in prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you for the joy that it is for us to be able to gather in this place. Thank you, Father, for what you have done when you sent your son, Jesus, to die for us, to be raised again, that we someday will join him. Father, thank you that you enter into this time now, and I pray that each heart here would participate in prayer. They would listen and repeat what they're hearing. They would agree with what is being said. And that, Father, your will would be done as we understand your will better and better through this avenue of prayer. So, Father, we commit this time to you. And we just ask, Father, that it glorifies you through our prayers and encourages the brother or sister sitting next to us. 
that, Father, this day we will remember what you've done and we will look expectantly at what you will do. Thank you for the hope that you bring. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we live in a country that gives us the freedom to be able to pray. And I thank God for that. Amen? Amen. And so I would like to introduce to you Major Des Nelson, who is with the chaplain, who is a chaplain in the Army Reserve and also works here at the university for us. Des, are you around somewhere? Good. Make your way over here, brother. The military, they can sneak up on you, you know. And Des will lead us in the presentation of the colors, our flags, and the national anthem. Good morning, everybody. Again, I'm Major Des Nelson. I'm a chaplain of the 653 Brigade in Arizona. We are RSG, and it's a pleasure to lead you in this. If you will stand with me, please, and remain standing, and do not move. So restrict your movement, please, for the presenting of the colors by our Lincoln Police Department, who have joined us today the National Anthem, and the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly. Place your hands on your heart and repeat the pledge after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, you may be seated. Well, we know the uh, prayers of a righteous person are very effective, but they're even more effective when you've had a good breakfast, amen? <laughs> and uh, I, we would like to feed you. And so since this is a prayer breakfast, we're going to pray for this food uh, I'm going to ask that we have uh, those who are going to be on the stage uh, for our prayer warriors that you would get up first and go and get your food in just a moment, and then I'll be dismissing you by tables. Is that all right? I think we'll have a good traffic flow that way. Let's pray. Father, once again, we thank you for the freedom that we have to be able to gather, the freedom to be able to pray, the freedom to be able to exercise our faith in this way. Lord, would you bless this time? Would you bless this food? 
to our bodies. May it nourish us, may it strengthen us, may it, Father, cause us again to glorify you as that is our mission in life, that others may be seen, you may be seen through us to others. Lord, we ask this in your son's name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I realize that uh, some of you are still eating. We don't want you to stop doing that. Uh, you can even get up and get some more food, but we'd like to move forward because we believe that uh, God is uh, maybe waiting to hear from us. In youth group, when I was a youth pastor, I used to say, uh, I'll dial the phone and everybody else can join in and at the end, someone else will hang it up. And uh, we're gonna dial the phone here in a minute. There is a wonderful hymn, a wonderful hymn that I often quote to myself, sing to myself as I go out to run. And it is, um, oh Lord my God, when I am in awesome wonder, because I consider all the worlds that thy hands have made. I see the stars and I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe is displayed. So sings my soul, my Savior, my God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. We're going to have an opportunity for you to allow your soul to sing. With your mouth, if it's full of food, you keep eating. But your soul might sing this morning if you would focus on the Lord and take just a moment. We have Rachel Stormont, pastor of uh, music over at uh, Destiny Church, alumni from 2012. Used to travel with me to churches and I really appreciate her and her gift that she uses for the Lord. And we got Tommy graduated in 2022 and uh, now works for me, heading around all different churches using his gifts for the Lord. We're gonna let our souls sing as they lead us in just a couple of songs. These are prayers, and I hope you'll make them prayers to the Lord as you join us in singing. If you can, I'd love to invite you to stand as we just enter into God's presence. generations a thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the lamb and all who've gone before us and all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the lamb come on we worship the name above all names your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name oh it stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your
it stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name oh it stands above them all your name is the highest your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name oh it stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name oh it stands above them all and the angels cry Let's praise the name of Jesus in this place. Jesus, we speak your name over every family represented in this room, over every single nation, every tribe and tongue. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Within your presence, I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. Jesus, there is healing in your name. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Jesus for my family, 
I speak the holy name of Jesus. Oh, time your name is power your name is power your name is healing your name is love break every stronghold break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other name, cause Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other name, cause Jesus is the way. One more time. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other name, cause Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other name, cause Jesus is the way. Amen. Jesus, we speak your name this morning. We know that it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by your spirit, says the Lord. So Holy Spirit, we tune our hearts to sing your praise. You are welcome in this place. We say, speak first to us and change our hearts. We don't want to look like anybody else except for your son, Jesus. So we welcome you here, Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you've already done in this place. And we pray. Praise the name of Jesus all across this room. Come on, people of God, would you give him praise? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, Rachel, Tommy, thank you so much. Prayer in music, prayer through music, thank you. I pray that your soul was uh, singing right along. And now I'd like to uh, welcome to the stage Dr. John Jackson, our president for I think the last 13 years, something like that, uh, along with Dr. Tamara Bennett, who is a good friend of his. <laughs> Tamara, Tamara has been a pastor for some 20 years in South Sacramento, and with her husband Q, they own the restaurant Q1227, so you ought to go try that when breakfast wears off, okay? <laughs> And I'd like to introduce them to share a little bit about prayer in their lives as we have a little time together. Well, I am so honored to be able to be here with each one of you and come before the halls of heaven. 
And the reason I wanted my dear, dear sister Tamara to be able to speak today and to share as we begin to renew this tradition. We used to have National Day of Prayer at Jessup for many years and then for a variety of reasons, uh, shifted to other churches and then through COVID uh, stopped the practice. But I am so honored to be able to reestablish this practice and have my sister Tamara with me. <clears throat> As Jim said, Tamara leads a number of ministries, and she and her husband Q and family are involved in a restaurant business, but I want you to hear this. When I hear my sister Tamara speak, when I hear my sister Tamara pray, when I am in her presence, I know that the heart of heaven is in her. So I ask you to listen to her and to hear the heart of heaven. Where's the worship dove queen? Where is she? Oh my God, she was amazing. Can we praise God for the world? I'm still trying to just get myself together. Um, I'm so honored to be here today and give honor to all of these beautiful men and women of God. I have a thing that I believe that people that get up at six and seven in the morning to come and pray are truly people that love prayer. Uh, so please look at your neighbor to the left and the right and tell them good morning, prayer warrior. Good morning, I love you, happy to have you with. Yeah, we're the movers and shakers, we are, we are. Give honor to uh, my dear friend, Dr. Jackson, and to all the ministers that are here, and to, um, to our brother Jessup, and to all the saints. Uh, it's so beautiful when brothers and sisters can get together in unity and prayer. Uh, I, I mean it. I mean, she just really entered us into uh, the presence of God, so I won't be very long. I just want to share a, a, a very familiar passage of scripture. Um, <clears throat> as we're all noticing what's happening in our earth and in our world, um, I, I live heavily by perspective, and I try very hard to stay in heaven's perspective of what's happening on earth. I try very hard to not allow it to shake me or move me because I realize I'm just a sojourner passing through. And so this isn't our home. And I know people don't really preach much about heaven and being heaven bound and things, but uh, I live in that mentality that I'm just a sojourner uh, passing through that God have allowed to be here at a certain season, at a certain time. And above all at a certain dispensation because God moves in waves and he moves in various dispensations. So we as believers should never be alarmed by what we see because prophecy have told us what should happen. And the thing that I'm um, accepting about prophecy is that it's not if, it's when. And so what we don't know is which part we will live in or live out with prophecy, but prophecy told us that there will be wars and rumors of wars and things. And so when we see that and when we deal with life in that perspective as we're talking about a national day of prayer, then, then we can know how we should posture ourselves with God. And how do we navigate through this. And so I just want to share this with uh, my brothers and sisters today as the Lord have reminded us. So Jesus said to them in Matthew 5 and 13, here's our reminder that we are the salt. We are. And when we remember that I don't care what happens in this earth, I don't care what crime, I don't care what, what political agendas might happen, I don't care uh, what devastations might happen, God have handpicked us before the world began. He's putting our, our name was already in the Lamb Book of Life, that he said, I needed you to be here at this season, at this time. I needed you to be a part of whatever is happening in the world because you're the one that I've chosen to be salt, to be prudent, to be the wisdom. He said, so you are the salt of the earth. And if the salt, if we lose our wisdom, if we lose our preservation of who Jesus is, if we become as alarmed as the world is alarmed, if we become as frustrated as they do, if we become as fearful as they do, he said, then, then, I, then you've lost your purpose. 
And so why do we pray? And prayer for me is absolutely not something that is like, uh, that's what we're supposed to do. It's a necessity. And the necessity is so that I can stay in tune with what my father is doing in heaven. And so that I can be aware so that his will can be done in me. He says, so if the salt um, should, how, how shall it be seasoned? How shall the world be able to see how to handle things in the midst of trouble? They see us. And they see us on our jobs. And they see us in our families. And the thing about when believers go through some things, like we're on display. <laughs> And so he does that, and we go through some things because he's saying, I'm going to also show the world what peace can look like in the midst of a storm. I'm going to show what, what, what homes can look like to be healed when there's been so much damage. He said, so, he said, but if the salt loses its flavor, then how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. So prayer and God calling us to prayer, and obviously we that love prayer know it's not just one day. <laughs> but we that have been called to prayer, we understand the necessity of prayer that we will hold our flavor, that we will remain seasoned in the midst of trouble. And so he said, so you are the light of the world. We are. He said, you are the light of the world in a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden, nor do thy light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lamp stand, and it gives light. Thank you, Jesus. It gives light to all who are in the house. So I leave you with let your light so shine before men that others will see your good works, your good works, and then glorify our God in heaven. I was sharing with one of our spiritual daughters the other day, and I was saying that, um, you know, there's so much darkness and things, and so what is our job as believers? Our job as believers is that our light is shining so bright. I cannot change this world. There are some things that must happen in this world because it is prophecy. There are some devastations that will not be changed. We can pray for grace. It can be warded off, but it's going to happen because God said it's going to happen. He said, but I have put children in the midst of it that I will set high. Hallelujah. And we will be light and we will begin to show his glory in the midst of the storm. I need some light shiners to praise him today. So let your light so shine. So we pray for our nation that there will be peace. We pray for our government that there will be peace. But the real peace lies within us. And if some laws never get changed, if wars never stop, there's a peace that lies within us. Let your light so shine. God bless you. Wow. Not only was that a challenge, that was actually under the time that she was allotted. So <laughs> you have set the bar high, sister. You know, Jim was talking about an early prayer ministry where he learned how to pray by getting something out of the carpet. The mom was saying, you better pray, Jimmy, that comes out of the carpet. That gave me a quick little childhood memory. Uh, my dad and mom pastored uh, Baptist churches, and they were militantly committed to Sunday morning church and to Wednesday night church. Does anybody ever remember Wednesday night Bible study? Well, I grew up going to Wednesday night prayer meetings, and Wednesday night prayer meetings when we were on vacation. Some of the people go on vacation don't go to church. My family went on vacation, and if it was Wednesday night, no matter where we were in the country, we had to stop somewhere for prayer meeting and I remember as a little boy praying to Jesus earnestly that we would find a Baptist church to pray in because Wednesday night prayer meeting in a Baptist church starts at 7 and it is over at 8 o'clock <laughs> and darn if the Holy Spirit didn't often lead my dad to stop in a Pentecostal church on Wednesday night and it would be 8 o'clock and prayer meeting would not be over so sister, the fact that you kept within your time limits, it's blowing my categories. 
I remember when I first came here to Jessup and had the privilege of being able to steward and continue to steward the Jessup legacy. I remember Bryce, uh, Jim's uh, dear father and my dear friend, uh, saying to me along with Jim that Jessup was the place where peace was made. It was the safe place. It was Switzerland. You could come from any kind of church or any background and 50 different denominations now on our campus. You'd come to Jessup and it would be a safe place where peace could be made. It was Switzerland. And I remember, quite frankly, being a little rebellious about that, uh, that idea, that, that analogy, because it always bothered me that Switzerland, to me, felt like such a passive place. And I have come to understand that peacemaking is not a passive activity. So I just needed to shift the analogy in my brain. When we make peace, as Sister Tamara said, we are literally not having peace be passively made. We are waging peace. We are waging peace. We are pressing in. We are literally doing, and this will seem crazy, we are doing warfare when we make peace. We are warring in the spirit because in John 10.10, Jesus tells us unequivocally clearly, not the job description, but the character of the enemy of our soul. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That is his nature, that is his character, that is his activity. All you have to do is turn on the news any day, and I know most of us in this room, we still do turn on the news, okay? So when you turn on the news, you will see the chaos, the destruction, the disorder that the enemy of our soul is trying to bring to the planet. But here at Jessup, we lift up the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We commit to submit to the authority of scripture and we wage peace for the unity of the church. So some of you remember the scene in John 17 when Jesus was literally doing what should probably more properly be called the Lord's Prayer. The prayer he taught to his disciples that we call the Lord's Prayer is really the disciples' prayer. This is really the prayer of Jesus. The scripture records with drops of blood, Jesus is in the garden and he intercedes to the Father and this is what he prays in one section in John 17. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I've given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world that they may be brought to complete unity, then the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory that you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. Let me press in to what the prayer of Jesus was for us on this National Day of Prayer. Let me press in and say that we pray that the glory of the Father that was revealed in the Son might be manifest in those of us who believe in his name. That no matter which place we come together for worship, no matter which stream of culture and society in which we engage, that we will say, I will manifest the love of the Father. I will demonstrate the love of the Son. I will exhibit the power and love of the Holy Spirit to redeem a world. Our world is desperately in need of the redemptive presence of Jesus in every corner of society. So I'm praying. And we are waging peace today. When we pray, we are waging peace. We are waging a battle in prayer. And so I pray that as we pray today, that you might hear brothers and sisters from every segment of society. And as we pray, you would know prayer is not passive. Prayer is an active, aggressive move to grab hold of the heart of heaven, to hear the sound of heaven. And I pray that as we pray today, you would again experience the presence of Jesus and the deep abiding love of the Father and the empowering work of the Holy Spirit and that we would leave this place and be one as he and the Father are one and we would demonstrate to the world that the name of Jesus is above every name. Lord, bless us as we pray.
So folks, let's do that. Let's buckle our seat belts and let's go to the Lord. All right. I'm going to invite up some people. Uh, they are going. They are prayer warriors to pray in certain areas of our society and in our church and family. And so uh, you'll see them in the program. But I want to invite up Sean T. Landon. If you would come up to pray for the government and military. She's from the Placer County Board of Supervisors. And you can sit right here on the left-hand chair if you would. Uh, I'd like to invite up Bishop Parnell Lovelace from the Center of Praise Ministries. He will be praying for the church. I want to invite up Don Proctor from City Pastors Fellowship. He organizes the pastors in the area, does a fantastic job, and he'll be praying for the family. Then I have uh, Dr. Derek Zond for education. Uh, he is our um, uh, professor, uh, associate dean for the School of Theology and Leadership and the director of our Master of Arts in Leadership here at Jessup. Then Dr. Scott Roberts to pray for healthcare and sciences. He's our associate dean of the School of Natural and Applied Sciences. Yes, we have science here because science is simply the study of how God did it. Amen, you with me? Okay, healthcare and sciences, Dr. Scott Roberts will be praying. Law enforcement will have Chief Brent Newman. He served 31 years with the California Highway Patrol, currently serves as the Warriors Rest Foundation and Concerns of Police Survivors. So Brent, thank you for being with us. Baldwin Chu, I'd like to invite you up for arts, media, and entertainment. And boy, does that need prayer, amen? Um, he is an award-winning film producer, hip-hop artist, gospel music association, and recording academy member. And I want to thank you guys already. And wow, you have to sit nice and tight, don't you? We're in unity up here. I hope you're in unity down there. As each of you pray, we'll have, uh, Shanti will have you start after their prayer. You can go and be seated back at your table. And there's even some food still back there if you want to eat with me, okay? Let's, uh, let's welcome uh, Shanti. Good morning, everyone. Um, please join me in prayer as we pray for our government and our military. Heavenly Father, as we gather today in fellowship and gratitude, we come before you with hearts that are full of joy and anticipation. We thank you for the privilege of living in a land where freedom rings, and where the brave stand to protect it. We lift up our military personnel and their families, those who selflessly serve our nation at home and abroad. Bless them with courage, strength, and resilience as they defend our freedoms and uphold peace and security around the world. Protect them from harm's way, shield them with your divine presence and bring them safely home to the warm embrace of their families. We also lift up our government leaders who are entrusted with a deep responsibility of guiding our nation and our communities. Grant them wisdom, discernment, and compassion as they make decisions that shape our neighborhoods, our communities, our cities, our state, and our country. May they govern with integrity, humility, and a steadfast commitment to justice and the common good. Help them to work together in unity and cooperation, transcending partisan divides for the betterment of our nation and its people. Lord, we ask you to appoint and anoint leaders who will rise up, believers who will be your light in our communities, that you would rise up leaders and anoint leaders in our military that would be your light in the midst of the most difficult situations, Lord. In the midst of division in our country, unite us as one nation, one community, indivisible. Help us to celebrate our differences, recognizing that it's our collective strength that makes us great. Inspire us to work together hand in hand to build a brighter future. Grant us the grace to be agents of peace and reconciliation in a world that is so often torn apart by conflict and division. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you 
as our sister, Mrs. Bennett, stated so eloquently and perfectly, that we remember the prophecies, Lord, and we know our job is to just be your light and to shine to those around us. Help us to extend a hand of friendship to those who are different from us, embracing the beautiful tapestry of humanity that you've created. May your light shine brightly in our hearts and in the hearts of our leaders, illuminating the path of righteousness and guiding us toward a future that is filled with hope and promise. With grateful hearts, we offer this prayer, Lord, trusting in your boundless grace and mercy. We love you so much and we trust you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. As we continue to pray for the Lord's church, Father, we thank you and give you praise that you woke us up this morning. You started us, God, on our way. And we give you glory and give you praise. Thank you that we're called the church, the bride of Christ. Thank you we are the redeemed of the Lord and we say so. Thank you, Lord God, that you have called us out, sanctified us, separated us, God, that we would be your people. Oh, we give you glory. Thank you, Lord God, that you brought us out of darkness. Thank you into this marvelous light that, Father God, we would walk, God, separated from the world, in the world, but not of the world. Thank you, Lord God, that we would be your hands, your feet in the earth. Lord, we bless you. Come on, Zion. Lord, we bless you. We bless you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us, that separates and sanctifies. Hallelujah. That pours your spirit out. Thank you, Jesus, that you're the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. Fill us again, oh God. Fill us again, oh God. Come on, Zion. Fill us again, oh God. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your anointing, God. In the name of Jesus, we need your joy. We need your peace. We need your strength. We need your guidance. Lord, we need you with all that's within us. Call us back, God, to our knees, to a place of prayer, God, to a place, God, that we call on your name and we watch the adversary defeated in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, ours is to say yes to you. Hallelujah. Come on here. We say yes to you, Lord God. Yes to you, Lord God. Yes to you, Lord. Do what you want to do through your body, through your church, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you beat back the forces of the wicked one. Cast the adversary off, God. Protect your church everywhere in the name of Jesus. Protect your people, oh God. Beat back the forces of the devil, God. In the name of Jesus. Surround us by a multitude of angels, God. In the name of Jesus. Touch the church, God. Touch our church, God. Touch your church, God. In your name. Lord, we need you. We need you. We cry out to you. Lift those hands, Zion. Lift those hands. We cry out to you. We cry out to you, God. We open our mouths and cry out to you, God. We need you like we've never needed you before. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we love you. And now, God, we give you glory now. We thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you for revival that's coming through your church. Hey, thank you, God, for revival that's coming through your church. Thank you, Lord God, for revival that is coming through your church. No division, no schisms, no divisive uh, forces coming against us, Lord. We stand as one people, hallelujah, anointed by God, appointed by God. Come on now. Come on, Zion. Open those mouths. Tell the Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, tell him yes. Come on, tell him yes. Come on, tell him. Don't play with it. Lord, we say yes to you. Yes to you, yes to you, yes to you. Change us, change us, oh God. Change us, oh God. Purge us, God. Purify us, God. Sanctify us, God. In the name of Jesus, put those hands together and tell the Lord yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
Glory. Well, listen, that same spirit as we're praying for the bride of Christ, let's bring that into our families and let's agree together. Father, we pray for our families, Lord. Just as Bishop prayed about revival, God, we want revival in our families, Lord. We want to we want to see the family unit, Lord, be restored if it's broken. We want to see the family unit, Lord, stronger now than it ever has before. Father, we're believing for where the enemy would try to come in and divide us, God, you're, you're uniting us, Lord. You're bringing that family unit together. You're seeing the values. We pray for marriages right now to be restored, Father. We're praying for marriages to be encouraged. Lord, let every, every spouse, Lord, be the greatest encourager to the other. Let them lift them up in prayer every morning. Let them be about what they're doing and the grace and the callings and the giftings that on side of them. Let us draw them out. Let our marriages be the most powerful entity on the face of the earth that we can be an example to our children, Lord, and show them this is how it's to be, Father. And so, Lord, I just pray for them. I pray for them. I pray for the parents just in the relationship to their kids. God, restore things that have been broken. Lord, help them to communicate. We see our culture. We see the things facing our children today. Lord, help us. Give us revelation. Give us wisdom. Give us insights, Lord, that differently than how we were raised up. Help us to speak into our kids' life, not just with the principles of God and the word, but just how they can relate in different ways, Lord, that they would know our love for them, how we want the best for them, how we want them to succeed and do great things in the name of Jesus. Father, even Mother Teresa said, man, if we want to change the world, we got to go home and love our family. Help us to be lovers of our family. Help us to know what we are called to do and help release our families into their destinies, Lord. And Lord, I say a special prayer right now, Lord, we're calling in all the prodigal sons and daughters. We're calling them home in the name of Jesus, Lord. We're speaking to all the church leaders that are dealing with all the people in our congregations that are facing these challenges. Lord, the prayers have been prayed for year after year after year but Lord it's time prayers are being answered Lord things are coming to pass just like we talked about prophecies and different things prophetic words have been spoken over our children and we're believing Lord they're coming home and they're going to serve the Lord with all their heart mind soul and strength greater than ever because their generation needs them right now so Lord we thank you for the family we thank you for protecting us healing us keeping us strong because, Lord, we are in this together, and we cannot do this without you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you continue to pray with me? Heavenly Father, your word says that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. So we intercede for education in our country. God, we thank you for creating us with the capacity to learn. We remember that the language we use, the cultural practices we follow, the skills with which we make a living, and even our petty and passing preferences are learned. So help us today to give thought to what we learn. Your word says if we call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if we look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then we will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For you give wisdom, and from you comes knowledge and understanding. So we are calling out today, Lord. Habakkuk longed for a day when the earth would be filled with the knowledge of your glory as the waters cover the sea God, we would love that. May that start with us. May that start at Jessup University. May that start in Rockland. May that cover Placer County. God, please bless our nation with campuses and contexts where learning is safe. We pray that no child would fear going to school. We pray no teacher would fear teaching. We pray no parent would wonder in what condition their child might come home. We pray that in our country, zip codes would not be destiny, that each, each student would have abundant opportunities to achieve their fullest potential. We pray that our classrooms and culture would reflect a destiny where every nation and every tribe and every people and every language praises you. We pray for excellence among American teachers 
that our teachers would deliver masterful teaching with a personal touch, that they would model courageous conviction and individualized consideration, be exacting yet patient, inspiring and transforming. God, we pray students would worship you with all their minds, lovingly discovering creation's beauty and complexity. And as descendants of a founding generation that in less than 16 years produced the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, and the Bill of Rights, may this generation employ tools at its disposal to also edify and redeem our culture. Rabbi Jesus, Develop us as your disciples, your students, your imitators as little Christs, modeling the values of your coming kingdom and pointing others the way. Father, as we learn, help us see the world as it really is. Help us see ourselves as we really are. Apart from you, and so beautifully in light of you. But most of all, Father, help us see Jesus in all his glory and majesty because that will be enough. Amen. Let's continue to pray for health, the healthcare field, and science. Holy Spirit, come and let your presence wash over all gathered here today. Transform us, mind, body, and spirit from the inside out and guide us to be more like Jesus. Today we want to lift up our hearts and give thanks to you, O Lord. Isaiah 58 reminds us that the glory of the Lord is our reward as the morning light rises out of darkness. Health and, health and healing spring forth quickly and righteousness goes before us to protect and prepare the way. In the morning light, Lord, hear our prayers. For health, Lord, you made, all the delicate, you made all the delicate and intricate parts of our bodies with precision and purpose in mind. Thank you for making us so fearfully and wonderfully complex. Lord, we thank you for the presence of uh, your, uh, your presence in our hearts, for the air we breathe, and for the food and water you provide that nourishes our bodies. Lord, thank you for the blessings of health, mind, body, and spirit. Lord, you are sh our shelter, our hope, and our strength in good and troubled times. Lord, we place our sick under your care and humbly ask that you restore your servant to health again. Above all, grant us the grace to acknowledge your will and know that whatever you do, you do for the love of us. Lord, we pray for the blessings of good health, uh, physical, mental, and spiritual health, and well-being for young and old. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray for you to open our eyes and our hearts and our minds and our hands as we seek to serve you and glorify you through your love for one another. Transform us into new creations. For healthcare, Jesus, divine healer, pour your grace upon all those afflicted with illness or disease. Protect uh, from harm those that are vulnerable due to sickness, suffering, frailty, poverty, or age, um, elderly or unborn. Lord Jesus, we praise you that you are the great physician. You came to heal the sick and help the poor. Lord, we praise you that you have designed people to follow in your footsteps to bring healing to those who are sick. Thank you, Lord, for the healthcare workers and their hearts for caring for the sick and hurting and dying. We praise you, Lord, for doctors, nurses, physicians, assistants, physician assistants, pharmacists, and all the others who work tirelessly in the healthcare system. We praise you for all those precious healthcare workers. They have a heart for those to serve and compassion to do so tirelessly in all situations. Holy Spirit, touch the hearts of all those who serve human life in medicine and science so they will protect the dignity of each person from conception to natural death and remain faithful advocates for all entrusted in their care. Enrich and restore healthcare workers in ways only you can, Lord. 
replenish their energy, clarity of mind, and desire to serve their patients. Give their families patience and understanding, being mindful of the load that they carry each day. Heavenly Father, we ask for you to bless the nursing and the health sciences program at Jessup. We are grateful for the men and women who desire to pour out their lives for the benefit of others as they serve their communities. Father, encourage them as they apply their knowledge in new environments, prepare them to face unexpected challenges with a teachable heart, a place with them with a willingness to seek you in your wisdom in all situations. For science, Thank you, Jesus, for being the root and foundation of science. Thank you for translating God's truth into a language that we can understand. We thank you, God, for your infinite wisdom, your unfathomable depth of knowledge, and your boundless creativity. You created things into being that have never existed before, and your knowledge knows no end. We pray for the men and women of science who are also men and women of faith. We know that scientists discover you reveal, and all are blessed. We ask, Lord, that you would give them wisdom, discernment, and a fortified faith that allows them to remain in awe of the things that you have created. Lord, we pray that you would provide science majors with minds eager to learn about your creation and share their findings. We pray for cures for illnesses that will be discovered in your time, that advances would be made in health and give life to all. Pray for all the work of scientists be rooted in ethics and values of life and for the betterment of humanity. Lord, let those gifted and curious, let those um, you gifted with a curious mind, a steady hand, and an unwavering faith be strengthened by you. Let them remember that our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And most of all, Lord God, we ask that all scientific discoveries may reveal more of your glory. May we recognize in a deeper way your genius, orderliness, and beauty. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we uh, continue in prayer, I just want to ask you, just before we close our eyes and pray over for our law enforcement officers, what's God saying to you right now? We're, we're talking to God a lot. What is he saying to you? And for those of you who came in with a burden this morning, what in this moment, what burden do you need to put at the foot of the cross? Let's go to prayer. Father God, we know that you ask us, Jesus, to cast our burdens upon you. And this topic, I feel a little bit uh, that that's appropriate. We come to you this morning, God, with boldness and with purpose as people who have need for our Savior and who love our Savior, Jesus, that has provided a path from our brokenness and toward a future that centers on our eternal relationship with you, Almighty God. I add to the prayers spoken aloud already this morning to the chorus of silent prayers of agreement throughout this room. We ask you in the name of Jesus to hear our prayers and to respond according to your will. I'm grateful, Lord, for the privilege of leading us all in praying for our law enforcement officers, our peace officers, in this moment. Romans 13 tells us that there is no authority except from God and that those that exist have been instituted from God. The authority of our law enforcement officers, our peace officers, rely upon to keep the peace. That authority begins with you, Lord, and flows through the people and the laws of our land. For the officers, Lord, thank you for each one who has chosen the noble profession of serving their fellow citizens, swearing an oath to lay down one's life rather than swerve from the path of duty. Many of our officers also serve or have served in our United States military and carry a special burden because of that double service. Thank you for their dedication. We ask with sincere purpose that you protect them and sustain them. Give them endurance for the ongoing trials they face, the evil they combat, the trauma they're exposed to, often being up close with the aftermath of violence and other forms of interpersonal human aggression and depravity. 
We're already seeing an increased pressure, Lord, and burden placed on our officers this year, particularly in this year and election year. We have existing anti-police sentiment. We have recruiting and retention issues, which lead to staffing shortages, long hours, canceled days off, burnout, and Lord, the chronic issue of high rates of suicide. We pray for these officers' safety and well-being. We call our officers to you, those who know you, Lord, that they would double down on their, on their following of you, their discipleship of you, that they would seek you, the source of true resiliency and healing. God, those who do but have lost their way, those who know you but are off track because of their trauma, and they've, Lord, focus them back on you. And Lord, for all the encouragement to stay the course. For those who have been wounded, we ask you to heal them of their wounds, both the ones that can be seen with human eyes and for the ones that we cannot see. Many of these officers are in unexpressed pain, gradually losing hope that the pain they are in, physically, emotionally, spiritually, relationally, that that pain will never get better. That's a lie, Lord, but it starts to become a belief. May you send help to each one so that not another life would be lost by their own hands. You see them, Father. You know them, you love them, just as you love each of us. For the officers who have died in the line of duty, including the four in Charlotte this past week, the 55 who have died this year, 24 in April alone, we ask for your comfort for the grieving families, co-workers, and the community. Jesus, you said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. We honor the sacrifice of the fallen. And at the same time, we pray for their families. We pray for those brave spouses who hope every night that they will hear the sound of the door open and the, the Velcro coming off, meaning that their officer has returned home. We pray for wisdom and strength for family members who support their officer. And again, particularly for the spouse. We pray for protection of little hearts that are in the home from the overflow from police work that may subtly and yet powerfully enter the home. Give these families special grace, we pray today. For the leaders of law enforcement, the sheriffs, the chiefs, the commissioners, the command staff, first line supervisors, the sergeants, Lord, we pray for courage, that you would give them courage to do what is right according to the law and their agency's mission, that they would lean in where there is controversy, to be present, that they would do what is right, even if it is at a cost to them professionally and personally. Thank you for those who demonstrate such character and may their numbers increase, Lord. And finally, God, we need and thank you for the public support that we do have. We thank you for chaplains and other nonprofit organizations that quietly and faithfully serve so well behind the scenes. The task of the officers made so much more difficult by a society that is conflicted. Gratitude for the many including in this room, who are supporters of our officers. May they be blessed. Let the courage of our officers be an example and an inspiration for each of us. Lord, lead and inspire more to speak out and act publicly in support of the good and needed service provided by our law enforcement officers, these peace officers, and for their leaders who are doing their best to perform their duty as peace officers without fear, favor, or discrimination. Scripture demonstrates over and over that courage flows from understanding who you are and that our strength and protection come from you, Lord. We are most courageous when we realize that nothing can separate us from your love, Lord, for those who are in Christ Jesus. Cause us to change our wavering focus from the potential perils around us. Focus off of that, Lord. The things that we're prone to worry about and be burdened with. And Lord, as has been said earlier, that we would fix our eyes on you, Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith. Even in these moments, and in this moment, we surrender our concerns. We place those at the foot of the cross to worship you, Lord, to put you on the throne of our hearts. Your word says in Hebrews, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight, every encumber encumbrance and sin which clings closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of God. Father in heaven, 
give these officers the endurance, give their families the endurance, and give our uh, public and those even in this room the heart to pray for them and support them. Hear our prayer this morning, Lord, for the protection and well-being of the men and women of law enforcement, we ask in Jesus' name. See, that's what happens when you leave the rapper up here by himself. It's said that the seat of government is power, but the seat of influence is in entertainment. So let us pray for the arts, media, and entertainment industry. Father God and creator of the universe, we are here today reminded that you are the creator and that we are all created in your image. That image of creativity, however, seems to be lost at times. But we are here now, remembering our arts, media, entertainment, athletic, and creative community. God, you said that you give sunlight to both the good and evil. You bless us all because we are all made in your image. But we choose to follow you, and so we ask for more sunlight more blessings, and more favor for your people. Above that, we ask for your presence in all that we do. We pray now for the arts and entertainment industry, from music to theater to acting on and off screen, to visual arts, dance, sports, journalists, and all the executives, crew members, producers, and writers that make up the entire industry. We pray that you raise up your people to lead the studios and newsrooms with integrity and authenticity, as well as lead those on the ground through their creative endeavors. We pray that you inspire and grant favor to your people so that we may share the talents you've given us and not bury them. We pray for the actors, musicians, and influencers that attain celebrity status to be people worthy of respect and admiration. We pray for those that are into the creative arts because they are lost in their identity and craving to find something that they can belong to. Help them know that they belong to you first and that you love them, especially when they may not even love themselves. God, we pray for athletes and coaches, that you fill the sports world with those that are willing to run the race and fight the good fight in order to re receive a crown that lasts forever. We pray for the church, its leaders, and the members to support those that are using their talents to minister both directly and indirectly in this industry. We acknowledge that the things we see and hear come mostly from an industry full of broken people. People that might have imagination for something beautiful, yet may be suffering in silence in a life that is not. We pray for the brokenness in this industry and that you will bring sunlight through your people into the creative community. To not only create beautiful art and works with passion, but to also love on those that are not yet living in your love and glory. Let us encourage those that are sacrificing stability in order to not bury their talents. Let us encourage those that may see failure as an end. Instead, see that failure is the opportunity you've given us to move us in a direction that is better. We pray for all of us who love you, serve you, and believe in you to be given opportunities and to use those opportunities to show excellence in our work. God, let our, let our excellence be an example of our faith and let our faith inspire us and everyone around us to excellence. Hollywood needs you. News and media need you. Sports entertainment needs you. The music industry needs you. The visual arts and fashion industry needs you. The gaming industry needs you. We need you because we are seen by so many. And if we are seen by many, we need you to be seen through us. God, we ask for your forgiveness. 
We ask for your forgiveness for wanting to be seen more than wanting you to be seen. We ask that our work doesn't diminish you, and we pray that we are not diminished when people learn about our faith in you. But instead, we pray that everything is amplified, that your light shines through us, that your story inspires greater stories to be told, and that our work will draw people to seek you. We thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you that this community is here to pray for other communities. We love you, and may that love help us to love others even more. We pray in Jesus' name. I want you to maintain an attitude of prayer. I'm going to pray a prayer of commissioning over you in just a moment. Matthew chapter 5 says that we are salt and light. Salt that's lost its tastiness is good for nothing to be thrown out. Light is not lit in order to be hidden under a bushel, but it's to be set on a lampstand so its light can shine to all. John 17 tells us that the Father and the Son are one and that the love of the Father is in the Son. And Jesus prays that for all those who believe in him, that the love of the Father, that the glory that he's given to the Son would be in them. Second Corinthians chapter five tells us that when we're in Christ, we are new creations, that old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Second Corinthians five tells us that we are ambassadors of reconciliation. We literally beg people on behalf of God to be reconciled to him. Would you close your eyes? Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. We humble ourselves. We acknowledge and repent for the times that we have trusted in chariots and horses or electronics and artificial intelligence, the times that we've trusted in media or eloquence, the times that we've trusted in appearance or power, instead of humbling ourselves before you and putting our trust in you. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, in the authority and in the name of Jesus, we contend together for the unity of the church. We contend together and say no to the wiles of the enemy who does everything he can do to steal, kill, and destroy, and we say no. We say no. We will be one as you and the Father are one. And now, O oh Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters in this place that they might leave commissioned as ambassadors of reconciliation, that we might have salty salt and bright light with the love of the Savior, broken and poured out for women and men to come to know him, for prodigals to come home, for families to be restored, for governments to be efficient and effective, for schools to be dynamic places of learning and discovery and creativity, for our law enforcement and armed forces to be protected and to be protectors, and for our arts, media, and entertainment to demonstrate the glory of the Lord Most High, paintings that inspire, sculptures that call forth the beauty of the creator and the creation, moving pictures and music that stir our hearts. Lord, we are ambassadors of reconciliation, and we receive that commission from you. Amen. 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 God is good, and all the time. Good, amen. All glory to the one. Just before I let you go, let me say a couple things. Uh, we're so delighted to be able to host this. We will indeed be hosting future National Days of Prayer right here at Jessup. I think the Lord is stirring up something here. You can remember that you were the folks at the first restart of the National Day of Prayer. 
And, and we join with events that are happening across the country. There is a special event tonight uh, at the state capitol. I think it's at 5 o'clock, and so we encourage all those who are able to join to do that. We thank you for our partners at FISH and KFIA uh, for joining us and sponsoring today. Thank you so much for your ministry. And then I want to give a special shout out to Marcy Limos and to the event staff and advancement staff and marketing staff of Jessup University. Have a good day. May the Lord bless you and keep you and go as ambassadors of reconciliation and peace. God bless you.